Hi everyone, uh, welcome to our webinar on how to boost uh, heavy civil construction project efficiency with digital construction analytics. Um, for those of you who don't know me yet, my name is Tammy Bronfen and I'm the marketing director at Datamate. It's really great to be here today. Um, we love doing these webinars. We're doing them uh, once a month on different subjects every time. Um, I'd like to take this opportunity to welcome my colleagues who will be leading the discussion. You can each introduce yourselves. Hi, everybody. Uh, my name is Uriel. Uh, I'm a civil engineer in my profession and uh, the director of uh, sales engineering uh, here at Datumate. And uh, I've recently visited uh, Dubai as a family trip, as you heard. And uh, uh, yeah, thank you all for joining. Uh, hi, everybody. My name is Tom Jennings. I'm the senior solutions engineer uh, in North America. Uh, I've been flying and building drones for the last 12 years. Uh, Really passionate about the industry. I'm a private pilot. I'm looking forward to sharing my experience with everybody. Thanks, Ariel. Thanks, Tom. Thank so, you. in today's webinar, we'll be discussing how our customers are using, or actually using, uh, drone data and advanced construction data analytics to improve transparency and co collaboration, increase accuracy, detect deviations, um, save time, and more. Uh, we'll also be showing you how you can use DataBIM to track progress, prevent costly rework, um, enhance transparency collaboration amongst all stakeholders, both within your teams and your organizations and with other stakeholders on the project, uh, reduce uncertainty, improve efficiency, compare dig digital as built with design and create automated engineering reports, which is also a huge time saver. Um, so we can, I think we can get started Tom, over to you. We're going to start off with um, real life use cases. Yeah, awesome. Thank you, Tammy. So let's just jump right in. Digitizing infrastructure construction analytics is, is beneficial for all, most all of the stakeholders across the project life cycle, no matter whether they belong to the owner, the general contractor, or the subcontractor. Uh, these stakeholders will see improved collaboration, increased time savings decreased risk and greater efficiency. Uh, w, WRS found that by flying the site using an RTK drone in a secure location, they were able to decrease risk by keeping surveyors out of the way of heavy equipment. The drone data could be processed in hours and shared across the entire enterprise so the decisions could be based on real-time data. Uh, progress was measured against the design files so that costly mistakes are discovered immediately or eliminated altogether. <clears throat> um, let's jump into some uh, real life examples of how the digital construction uh, enterprise can benefit from a database. So one of the most interesting use cases I've seen lately came from ATS Construction Kentucky. Dylan Murphy uses database overlay as built drawings over the 3D model of infrastructure projects. Before setting foot on the job site, he can use the annotations tool to document all of the visible conflicts on the project. The annotations tool provides a screenshot of each conflict comparing the 3D model to the as built file so that visualizing the problem is easy. He hands over a PDF report identifying all of the conflicts for the owner and architect to fast track pre construction tool. So, I've been working directly with the team at ATS, and some of the other benefits of the database platform they have cited are transparency and collaboration with the owners and subcontractors, real time analysis and progress tracking, and detecting and reporting on conflicts between the designs in the real world. Of course, making the leap into digitization does have challenges. End user resistance with the initial rollout training is one of the most common challenges. For any company starting or scaling a drone program, it is critical to find the roles for each individual. My experience with Western Engineering is that as soon as the engineering services saw the power of the drone data, it wasn't a question of when they would roll out the drone program, but how fast and how efficient, efficiently they could scale it. DataBIM is a cloud-based solutions 
So scaling it then for across the enterprise, simple and effective. Another use case is always excavating. They're using data BIM to perform mass haul analysis on site to avoid costly hauling. I'm going to read directly to my client, Aaron Dorf. He had already started work on the project before we introduced the platform set work. There's a specific area of the site where the biggest fill for the project is needed. We wanted to track the progress of that fill because we had to make a decision about whether we could complete the site work with the material we had on site or needed to bring extra material for, for this project. The first time I went out to check progress on site, I had to do a topo on foot. It took me about half a day to do that. Just that one small part of the site. After that, we started using the drone and the data platform. All I needed was 20 minutes to fly it, and I didn't just get the information about that small part of the site. I got all the information I needed for the entire site. Aaron found the data bin platform a huge time saver, and he was able to collaborate effortlessly with his team in the field. For Aaron James at Peel, it's not unusual to drive long distances job to job. In fact, prior to data bin, the team at Peel often had drive hundreds of miles every week visiting work sites and carrying out footsteps of the terrain to calculate stockpile volume to check progress. In addition to being extremely time consuming, this also has physical and safety. In the case of the Hampton Lumber Bowl project, it takes James about an hour and a half each way, which totals a half day of work. With that amazing, he can send another drone pilot to the site while he works on other things off. So instead of spending so much time on site, he's only spending 15 to 30 minutes on processing the information too. I've been down there about 10 times since we started working on the project. I estimate that I would have at least double that 20 or more times if we weren't using data. In addition to the amount of time this would have been, it also would have delayed the project itself as I'm extremely busy at The next use case comes from Advanced Civil Group in Southern California. They use data bin on more than 30 different projects in parallel. One of these projects, located in Huntington Beach, belongs to the Olson Group, of the largest home builders in Southern California. Steve Austin, president of ACP, explained that the imagery taken was presented to the owners so that they can make an informed decision about whether the property was good value for money and what the next steps for construction. One of our biggest challenges is always access to adjacent properties for elevation data. In this situation, while ACG access to the property that was being served, there were nine separate landowners that abutted the Huntington Beach property. It was critical to understand each one's elevation in order to present the accurate data and recommendation. Steve is able to leverage his drone program to deliver site data in hours rather than days, weeks, or months. So those are some of the real world use cases our clients are taking advantage of. Let's take a deep dive into the platform to better understand the capability. Thank you very much, Tom. Uh, well said. Uh, now uh, let's take a quick tour into Darwin. Darwin is a cloud-based solution. It means that you can log in from any computer or tablet with an internet connection. And uh, once we're logged in, we see all the projects that we are assigned to uh, on a map and also on the left side in our digital notebook. Uh, with images and more information about each and every project. Let's choose one of the projects and visit it. Once we're in, we can see in the center uh, uh, the 3D model from a given date. 
the model is georeferenced uh, to any coordinate system. Uh, in this case, uh, the, the Kentucky State Coordinate System. Uh, that Dataubeam works with local coordinate system as well. Uh, as you can see, we can zoom in, uh, we can tilt the model, it's a 3D model. Uh, at the top here, you can see the timeline. Each of these bullets is another flight, and all of them together allow us to uh, manage our project in a in much more efficient way. On the right side, toolbox for engineering calculations, like uh, uh, measurement of distances, areas, volumes. On the left side, all the information that we measure or, or gather is being saved. Analytics, measurements, annotations, which are geolocated points of interest in the model, designs that the users can upload very easily, an overlay on the model, which I will show a bit more later. And of course, in order to add another flight, the user simply clicks on the add flight key, throws in the drone images uh, that he has, go through a very simple and automated process, and uh, not soon not uh, uh, or soon later, uh, that will be generates the model in the cloud. The model is ready, and the user can work on the platform. Back to you, Tom. Yeah, thank you, Ariel. Yeah, I really think that we differentiate ourselves from the competition with our ability to work with all of the different design files, uh, Bentley and AutoCAD, Autodesk. But, uh, I, f I fully agree. And uh, we'll show a bit, a bit more about uh, um, what type of uh, design files we support and how the users uh, use them with, with use cases. Uh, and I agree, it's super important for, for all of, you, all of our customers, I would say, yeah. Yeah, absolutely. Um, so the next thing I'm going to talk about briefly is uh, what we're doing with artificial intelligence. So we're now using artificial intelligence to auto-detect and mark the center of ground control points. We've trained a model to identify all of the major symbols used to mark control points. One of our clients preferred to use chevrons on the ground, so all we had to do was train our system to identify those markers. Right away, your UAV survey teams are going to experience big time savings when our platform is marking all the ground control points for them. So as the construction industry continues along this journey of digital transformation, there are tremendous opportunities for companies to streamline their process increase efficiency, and retain their competitive edge. Datamade's virtual ground control points save valuable time and money while maintaining the survey grade accuracy of construction site mapping model. Let's think about how we can use real-time kinematics and virtual ground control points to save time on the job site. The initial setup involves laying out physical GCP and manually measuring their location. The DataBIM AI engine automatically identifies the physical, physical GCP marking structure and center. Beginning with the second flight, the DataBIM's automatic georeferencing algorithm identifies features existing in both flights and creates a set of virtual control points. In every subsequent flight, a new set of VGCPs is created based on data gathered in the previous flight. This eliminates any further use of physical GCP. Now, as noted, the virtual ground control point relies on the power of AI-driven automatic GRF, an image processing algorithm. As soon as the data bin system creates the 3D photogrammetry model of the construction site, it begins matching up images and features that it recognized in previous flights. The more often flights more information the system can process and learn about the location, ensuring that the models take into account any changes to the terrain over time and during the action. So if you already have an existing drone program with your own photogrammetry workflow, but want to take advantage of the data bins, cloud-based tools, analysis, analysis and collaboration, we have the perfect option. DataBin makes it easy to upload a pre-processed model. All you will need to do is 
have your ortho photo and LAS file read, go upload into the data bin platform. I've seen many clients use this as a clean and easy method to scale their drone program from a desktop based photogrammetric cloud -based. Now, the benefits of cloud based solutions are eliminating siloed data, sharing data across the entire enterprise, scaling the program across the enterprise, connecting field and project management workflows, and generating takeoff and quantities for a single solution. Hey, Tom, I just wanted uh, to add uh, some, some few more comments here uh, following our uh, internal discussion that we had uh, today. So uh, we also see that uh, some of our customers use Databeam uh, to share and collaborate uh, between uh, uh, external stakeholders. For example, if I am the GC of the project, uh, I sometimes uh, share the data with uh, the owner. It can be via PDF reports or uh, spreadsheets, but it can be also via um, active users in the platform or uh, view users that uh, can get access to specific job sites. So that for sure uh, increases the, the uh, transparency and uh, improves the confidence of uh, both uh, sides, I assume. Great way for people to collaborate together and eliminate any disputes over minor incidents. Definitely. I agree. Perfect. Thank you. By the way, um, maybe some of the attendees uh, have some questions about uh, this topic or the GCPs or anything else. Feel free to write uh, uh, in the QA, Q and A section um uh, in, uh, in the webinar and uh, we will try to reply all of the questions uh, at the end so uh, looks like it's uh, uh, my turn again um and so i'll continue um i wanted to elaborate a bit about uh, designs uh, that will support multiple design formats uh, such as uh, DXF, DGMs, uh, DWGs, Land XMLs, and IFC. Uh, this is an example of uh, five miles uh, or eight kilometers a project bypassing a city. And uh, here we can see um, a design uh, that is overlaid on the model. Uh, in, a in the design, we see an area of a stockpile that was imported uh, or brought to the site. Uh, it was measured by the surveyor and uh, uh, the surveyor uploaded the design to Darwin. Uh, by right-clicking the design, we can receive in a few seconds uh, the volume of the stockpile, and we can validate and uh, um, compare it, sorry, I'm stopping a bit, uh, compare it uh, to the numbers that we have received uh, from uh, the surveyor. So we can make a quality assurance or volume assurance. This is another example from the same project. Uh, here we can see the design of the road overlaid on the 3D model. Uh, we can make sure that the construction is following the design. The road is not exceeding the limits. Everything is being built according to the uh, design. And uh, here, same project, uh, we are checking the installation of the, the lights here. We can see that this one uh, is not exactly in the correct location. We can uh, address it. The project manager can open a ticket or a notation, or maybe it's not very important, um, but he knows about it at least. In this case, this one is, is good, more or less. And uh, we also can see the design of uh, the water line or uh, the grounding works, and of course, any other layer that we will upload to Darwin. Here is a, a project that uh, includes a 3D IFC design. <clears throat> of a light rail bridge. Uh, our customer uses Darubim during the design stage. Uh, he wants to see how the light rail bridge uh, incorporates with the existing ground uh, above and also underground, as you can see, uh, and what type of work he needs to, to do, uh, type and amount of work. Uh, currently, this customer uh, is using Darubim, as I said, for the design stage. But before he was using uh, uh, Darwin for the design stage, uh, this specific customer actually uh, won the tender using Darwin. Uh, he flew the job site 
um, he received uh, the information about uh, the volumes or uh, the quantities that he needs uh, to, to conduct during the project, a uh, much more accurate estimation. And uh, that will help him uh, win the tender or the project. Uh, moving on, uh, back to you, Tom, uh, for some more uh, automated uh, processes. Yeah, thanks, Ariel. I love the, the 3D IFC files. I just think it's so uh, amazing to be able to visualize the, the end of the project and see where you're going. So really excited about that technology. I agree. Um, I agree. Yeah. So let's jump into some automated engineering reports. So DataBIM offers a suite of valuable tools designed to make measurements and analytics simple and effective. Uh, the DataBIM cross-section analytics tool allows our users to make a cross-section of any surface to visualize, visualize the elevation. You can then add another design surface or flight in the project so that you can monitor change or track progress. Uh, one of our clients asks us to create the cross-section report for the entire road project. We put our team in Israel to work. We are using the power of machine learning to bring automated engineering reports to the infrastructure construction. Uh, key benefit of automating reports is the amount of time to save the manual data rank process. The removal of these manual processes frees up significant time for key staff, allowing them to focus on more important activities that enhance business insights and drive better decisions. I like to think we're putting machine learning to work, taking mundane and tedious jobs off of the plates of engineers so they can focus on what is really important. Uh, the cross-section volume report and generate tabular and visual volume calculations, finished grade, and subgrade surfaces against the existing 3D model. Now that that tool is automated, the reports can be automatically generated as needed during the life cycle of the project. Perfect, thank you, Tom. And uh, I wanted uh, to speak about another process that uh, we automate in, in Datumate or with Datubeam, and uh, it's called the, the grade checking report. Uh, the grade checking is an important task in uh, any road construction. Since the road is being built from layers over layers, uh, so uh, uh, the road will be durable for, for many, many years. Uh, the construction team must verify that each and every layer is being built according to the design before progressing to the next one. Databeam allows its users to easily compare between the s either from the 3D model, from, from the, the imagery that the Databeam generates, uh, or from a traditional survey. Uh, uh, to the design, uh, the design of the different layers. It means that uh, even if you don't have a flight in the same day, if you don't have the drone with you or uh, the weather doesn't allow it or the surveyor simply is on site, you can uh, import to Datubeam the information directly from the surveyor and uh, make the comparison on Datubeam. So uh, you will save lots of hours uh, at, at the office on generating this report. And uh, the reported job to be generates that you can see now on the screen um, shows the delta between the design to the SB. Uh, here you can see that uh, on, on the right uh, uh, column. Uh, once the delta is small enough, according to the project uh, standards or parameters, the team can progress to the next layer. And uh, again, another automated uh, process, which uh, uh, was very tedious, and, uh, but super important for, for, the, for the project. And uh, Darwin automates it and makes it uh, much faster, uh, matters of, uh, I say, minutes uh, in, uh, compared to two hours or days even. The next um, process that uh, we automate uh, at uh, Datumate is uh, um, how we identify different elements of, uh, of the construction. In this case, a substation. Uh, as part of uh, the project uh, and the using Datubin, our customer asked us to automatically track different stages of energization elements in this substation. 
Uh, you may think that it's not an issue to manually update uh, the status of, uh, of these elements, uh, but the customer uh, builds uh, dozens of uh, substations a year, mainly, mainly in Europe, um, it, uh, thus uh, saving numerous hours of uh, manual work. DataBeam leverages its artificial intelligence engine to complete this task and to generate automatic reports to the customer after each and every drone flight. That comes to together with uh, what uh, Tom was saying earlier about uh, the AI capability uh, of uh, GCP detection, uh, another, another time saver. And uh, um, here I will explain how it works. So the customer provided us with images, raw images of uh, different stages. Uh, the stage uh, one is the ground, stage two are the excavations, uh, different uh, different types, uh, stage three, the concrete, stage four, the steel installation, uh, also different types, and stage five, different types of uh, uh, electrical uh, components. Uh, in this case, there were uh, six uh, electrical components. And uh, uh, as you can see, some of the images are from the drone, some of the images are from the ground as well. This is the information that we received from the customer. By combining the information from the images, from the designs, from the SBIN that was generated in DataBeam, uh, the platform uh, um, generated automatic reports after each and every upload uh, of a new model. Uh, this is one example of a report uh, that provides uh, uh, the information about the different stages of the foundation work. Uh, for example, here we see that the 10 foundations uh, are in the ground stage, and no foundations at all are in the excavation stage, and four piles were, were casted with concrete at this time or, or in this model. And uh, on this report uh, that provides uh, the following information, uh, foundation completed in 14 elements, erection of the steel structure was completed in four elements, and 93 energization elements were fully installed. These are only a few examples of automation that Darby brings uh, to the construction industry, and uh, we will show you a few more uh, soon. Going back to you, Tom. Yeah, thanks, Ariel. Very interesting the work you're doing in Europe right now. Um, so the next mm -hmm. topic. Together. Yeah, let's jump into what's next for DataBIM. Uh, the next step for DataBIM is support for 4D. That means that users can upload the schedule to the DataBIM platform to Microsoft Project or Primavera P6. Users can view the Gantt chart, the task, the critical path, and the amount of work that has to be done in the units. DataBIM will allow users to tie the plan and the design together they have uploaded into DataBIM to the 3D model. In this case, we can see a linear task, for example, excavation. The user can connect the design of this task to the task in the Gantt chart, then update the design based on the real progress in the most recent flight. In this case, we see that excavation reached about 50% of the progress. And then DataBIM provides the real progress in red compared to the plan progress in gray, allowing us to better monitor and track progress on the job site. Thank you, Tom. Um, I wanted to show uh, how it works uh, on the platform, the 4D, and uh, I will speak a bit about uh, what is going to be uh, in the future, in the near future. So the user uploads uh, the schedule to DataBeam, like you were saying, uh, can view it uh, uh, the Gantt or together with the 3D model. And uh, after uh, the user, he can edit uh, the schedule, delete, update tasks. Uh, the next step is to tie between each and every task to the design in Adobe that was uploaded to Adobe in order to track uh, the progress of, of the task. In this case, we are tracking uh, an activity, a, a construction of a beam. In this row, uh, we're zooming into the design, we associate the design with the 3D model and the task from, from the Gantt. And right now we are measuring the actual progress uh, from the flight of uh, March. Um, 
It's about 18 meter, 18 meters from 408, uh, 4% more or less. And the red dot is where we are today in March. Moving on to the next flight, April. Again, we are measuring the actual progress from uh, this date. Which is about 146 meters uh, or 36 percent. Now we already see a graph uh, that shows us the planned pace in gray uh, compared to the actual in red. And also in red broken line, we can see the estimated ending date of this task um, according to the progress that we have done so far. So this is a quick introduction to the 4D. Uh, the next stages will be to combine the, the AI that we have now together with the 4D, meaning that, that we will be able to recognize automatically different uh, stages of different elements and we'll be able to report automatically uh, their progress. Um, that's all for today from our side. Uh, we showed you the 4D capability. Tom showed us uh, some real use cases from real projects that uh, uh, work with Databeam and manage them with Databeam. Uh, we also gave you a sneak peek to the Databeam platform. Um, now we're more than happy to move to the Q&A section. So I'm just gonna jump in here. Please feel free to write any questions you have in the Q&A uh, box section in the webinar and we'll answer them um, as we see them. Um, I can see a few already now, so I'm just going to read them out and then Uriel and Tom, you can decide who's going to take each one. Um, first question, which is one that always comes up, what type of drones do you support? I can jump on that one. Uh, DataBIM is drone agnostic, so what that means is that we're able to work with any drone that captures uh, geotags on the images. So we're currently working with uh, Wingtra, DJI. Uh, we can even use Skydio drone, a very flexible platform. You know, we do recommend RTK uh, drones. I'm working right now with a, a client in North Carolina who's using the uh, DJI Mavic uh, Enterprise, which is an RTK drone. They're using it with a base station. Uh, but you can also easily tie these drones into the cores network, or if you have a uh, Trimble or uh, like a base station on site, you can tie it directly into that system as well. So, you know, that's the great thing about Automate. It's very flexible, and we can work with all the major drone manufacturers at this point. Fantastic. Um, another one that's come up here. What kind of design files do you support? Okay, um, I, I can take this one. Um, something that uh, we spoke about, and that's um, something that we see that is super, super important to all of our customers. Um, we support uh, DWGs and uh, DXFs. Uh, DGN, so the DWG is from AutoCAD mainly. The DXF is a, is just a, um, a, a general uh, file that uh, users can export from e either AutoCAD or Bentley or another CAD platform. Uh, the DGNs from Bentley we support as well. Um, Land XML mainly to generate those uh, surfaces when users would like to make uh, volumetric or cross-section comparisons. Usually they upload a land XML surface, uh, either of the pre-construction condition uh, or the, the final uh, design. And then they can make uh, the comparisons uh, using these land XMLs. Um, and we also support uh, the IFCs. Currently the IFCs provide uh, or allow the users uh, to visualize the, the end project uh, usually. Uh, but in the near future, users will be also able to uh, use them for uh, for the 4D and also to get the quantities directly from these designs. 
I have a lot of clients saying that they see a huge benefit in being able to work with both the microstation or the, the AutoCAD files. No matter what the owner uh, or architect sends them, they're going to be able to import that data or those design files work with inside of the system. So a lot of flexibility there. Yeah, and, and actually uh, something else that I would like to add is that uh, regarding the, the pre-construction uh, condition is that uh, in many cases our customers don't fly the drone from, from day one. They fly the drone from after a, a month, two months. Uh, you know, it takes some time to, to organize uh, the project, the lay down area. Uh, so they don't have a, a drone flight or a drone survey uh, of the pre-construction uh, condition. Uh, that's one of the reasons that uh, they like to take those uh, surfaces or XMLs that uh, were measured by the, the land surveyors uh, to upload them to Darwin, and uh, they they can uh, they can be uh, let's say the the base surface or the ground zero uh, for all the calculations and the comparisons. Yeah, DataVim gives us a great way to work with all these design files without having to have a PhD in Civil 3D or any of these other uh, really complicated systems that are demanding to work with. Perfect. Are you ready for the next one? Yes, yeah. yes. Sorry, okay, Ken. fantastic. So, no, that's great. It's good. Um, good to create a discussion about other questions. So, um, how would I access your service? Like, do I need to download anything or like, how is it accessed? Tom, do you want to get it? Yeah, I'll jump on that. So that's the beauty of a uh, data BIM is it's completely cloud-based. We're able to take advantage of uh, cloud computing. All of our, our service runs off uh, AWS servers located here in the United States of America. So we can, uh, parallel in process, things are much faster. Uh, you have a single source of truth for all of your data. So it's very easy to scale this across your entire enterprise. You're not gonna just have data siloed on a hard drive somewhere that's only accessible to your surveyors. Uh, everybody on your team is gonna be able to log in, access that data. You know, in addition to that, you can even have your uh, teams walk the job site with uh, tablet in hand and access to the data bin platform via the cloud so they can make measurements in real time on the job site. Once again, you know, lots of flexibility, very robust and dynamic system. Sounds good, thank you Tom. Yeah, that's a great benefit. Uh, Thanks. Tammy, I had a question that came up from one of that I'll, I'll, I'll address. Um, I see a question here that asks, is AI and drone data going to replace surveyors? And uh, you know, this definitely comes up a lot. I don't think that what DataBIM is working on will ever replace surveyors. We're strictly here to complement the work that's being done in the field. Uh, AI is going to really boost productivity, I think. What we're going to see is that the surveyors, engineers in the field are going to be able to focus on what's really mission critical, kind of avoid doing a lot of these mundane tasks. Uh, people aren't going to be walking with uh, <clears throat> field collectors. They're going to be quickly flying, generating all this data, and moving on to much more important items for the uh, construction. That's uh, that's a good answer, and indeed, uh, DataBeam, or or I think any any other uh, technological uh, AI or not uh, solution, will not fully replace uh, uh, men, but uh, just uh, will help uh, and make them uh, make us more efficient. I think that one of our customers mentioned that. Uh, for, for each project that they use Darwin, they can save uh, one, one headcount at least of a uh, project manager or a project engineer. It means that uh, this project engineer or project manager can work in another job site. They can uh, work in more job sites. They can get more work and uh, uh, expand, actually. 
Yeah, I've never met really a certain. Oh, sorry, Tammy. I was just going to say, I think that's really important today with there's such a huge sh shortage of professional like, workers. Um, so it's basically enabling them to do more with the same workforce, right? So, I mean, that's a huge mm -hmm. benefit as well. Yeah. And, and I think, Tom, one of uh, the customers that work with you uh, started expanding to uh, other states, correct? Uh, since he uh, uses that a bit. Yeah, exactly. They're able to work more efficiently and expand operations. Uh, that's very specific to what's going on in the Southeast. They're just in such a large expansion of uh, work and uh, production and construction. Yeah, it's funny. So they're basically I, bidding on, on projects that they weren't bidding on before, right? Exactly. They're able to expand operations, bring in additional revenue. Uh, there's definitely a very strong uh, return on investment for the data bin platform in terms of productivity and efficiency. Fantastic. Uh, do we have time for one more question or we want to start closing off? Uh, we have more time, I think. Okay, so I think we, you know, we have for one, there's one more question here. Um, it's basically, uh, is the platform uh, suitable for general contractors and subcontractors as well, or mainly for owners? Okay, good question. Uh, I think, Tom, since uh, you work with many GCs, uh, you, can, uh, you can reply. Yeah, absolutely. Uh, that of them is a great platform for general contractors. I actually see being able to improve transparency between the owners and the GCs is uh, so important. What we're seeing is a major uh, decline in the number of disputes. Once people start using this platform, uh, general contractors are able to make you know, all sorts of measurements, generate reports, but they can also share all this data with the owners to ensure them that the progress, uh, project is on uh, on schedule and on budget. So you know, data bin is great for general contractors and owners. And uh, you know what I see is the GCs also sharing all this information with subcontractors. So yeah, and uh, I will add to that that uh, uh, the GC can manage uh, both uh, or two or more processes with Darwin. The first one is in front of the, the owner, uh, uh, invoicing or uh, billing or money that he needs to get. Uh, but on the other hand, uh, he also manages um, the processes in front of his uh, subs. Uh, he wants to make sure that they are on time. Uh, they're not late, so he can open Darwin, he can show them, uh, okay, in this project, uh, you were and in this date you were supposed to do this and this and that, uh, but you did only part of it. Why aren't you progressing faster uh, or approving their invoices, validating them? Uh, so that's in terms of GC and uh, also subs, also subcontractors that work on large projects, uh, for example, earthworks or piling, uh, especially for uh, highways and, and rails. Um, that would be a great solution for them. Yeah. Fantastic. We actually, I think there was one, uh, I think you mentioned um, uh, one of the customers who said that they were actually winning bids because they were using digital construction. So I think at some stage it's going to become a standard kind of across the board for, you know, all stakeholders involved in a project to be using some sort of single source of truth. So. Correct. And we do see that many states uh, start to mandate uh, digital uh, uh, digital uh, uh, documentation in, in some, uh, some way. I know that California are much more advanced. Uh, others uh, require only like uh, drone uh, images, broad drone images on a monthly basis. But uh, I'm sure that everyone will get there uh, soon enough. Digital delivery is definitely a, a hot topic these days. Yeah. I think all the DSTs are going to be focused on some form of delivery. Absolutely. 
Okay, so we don't have any more questions. I think we're, uh, we can um, finish off. Um, thank you okay. everyone for joining us. We will be sending an email with the recording and our contact details uh, within the next couple of days um, for your reference. Um, thanks guys, thanks Ariel and Tom. Thank you everybody for joining. Thank you very much. Thank you. Bye Thank everybody. Thank you so much. And uh, whoever's going to be at Con Expo in two weeks, we'll see you there as well. Yes, of course. Con Expo. We will be there. Thank bye, you everyone. Bye-bye.